Welcome to Daily Global Defense and Geopolitics Analysis. We're trying out a new format so we'd appreciate your feedback. We kick off with the escalating tensions in the South China Sea. In recent times the waters of the South China Sea have grown increasingly turbulent, not due to the weather, but because of the rising tensions between the Philippines and China. This has turned into a hotbed for international disputes, with the waves of discord reaching far and wide. China, in its quest for territorial dominance has been adopting aggressive actions, which have sparked concerns among the international community. A recent incident that has caught global attention involved a Chinese Navy helicopter harassing Filipino researchers near the Pag Asa Island. Imagine the scene. The hum of the helicopter blades, the chilling presence of a foreign military force, and the undaunted spirit of the researchers continuing their work amidst such intimidation. Despite the real and present danger, the Filipino researchers completed their task, standing resolute against the tide of aggression. In the face of these hostilities, the Philippines has not stood idle. The country is making concerted efforts to assert control over Thitu Island, a piece of land that holds strategic importance in this maritime dispute. But China, relentless in its pursuits, continues to intrude into Philippine territorial waters. This action has not only strained the diplomatic relations between the two nations, but also posed a significant threat to the stability in the region. Despite these hostilities, the Philippines is asserting control over Thitu Island, with China continuing to intrude into Philippine territorial waters. Moving forward, we examine the counteractions the Philippines is taking against Chinese aggression. The tension in the South China Sea has reached a boiling point, prompting President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. to announce a set of countermeasures against Chinese hostilities. This move signals a firm stance from the Philippines, demonstrating their resolve to protect their territorial waters. But the Philippines is not standing alone in this. The United States and India, two significant global powers, have extended their support. This international backing, particularly from the United States, a long-standing ally, lends considerable weight to the Philippines' efforts to safeguard their sovereignty. India's support meanwhile is indicative of its growing role in the region's geopolitics. These developments follow a series of aggressive actions by China, which Manila has not taken lightly. The Philippines has lodged strong protests against these acts of aggression, including a recent incident where a water cannon was used against a Philippine vessel. This assertive response from Manila is a clear message against such belligerent actions. However, these countermeasures and international support do not seem to deter China. Beijing continues to warn the Philippines against escalating tensions, accusing Manila of seeking long-term possession of disputed areas. While this accusation is a clear attempt to shift the narrative, it only underscores the critical need for dialogue and peaceful resolution of the dispute. As we look towards the future, the question remains, how will these countermeasures impact the balance of power in the South China Sea? Only time will tell. For now, we watch as this geopolitical chess game unfolds with the Philippines, backed by international support, making strategic moves to protect its territorial integrity. China has warned the Philippines against escalating tensions, accusing Manila of seeking long-term possession of disputed areas. Now, let's delve into the role of the United States in the ongoing South China Sea dispute. The United States has been a vocal supporter of the Philippines in this escalating conflict. The American stance is rooted in the shared history, strategic interests, and mutual defense treaty between the two countries. But it's not just about bilateral bonds, it's also about the larger regional peace and stability. The U.S. has consistently denounced China's aggressive actions in the South China Sea. This condemnation is not just a show of support for the Philippines, but also a move to challenge China's sweeping maritime claims that, if left unchallenged, could disrupt the international maritime order. The American support is not just rhetorical. The U.S. military presence in the region serves as a deterrent against further Chinese aggression. The recently lifted restrictions on the F-35A Lightning, a formidable component of the U.S. Air Force, could further bolster this military posture. However, the U.S.'s engagement goes beyond military might. It also involves diplomatic maneuvers. The U.S. has been rallying international support against China's coercive tactics, thereby isolating Beijing and strengthening Manila's position. This U.S. involvement in the South China Sea dispute is also a reflection of the larger geopolitical landscape. The South China Sea is a vital global trade route. Ensuring its freedom and security is in the interest of many countries, including the US. 
In a broader sense, this dispute is part of the strategic rivalry between the U.S. and China. By standing with the Philippines, the U.S. is also defending the rules-based international order it has championed for decades. The U.S. standing firmly behind the Philippines underscores its commitment to maintaining peace and stability in the region. Switching gears, we turn to the world of aviation where the F-35A Lightning is back in the sky. For the past four years, this formidable aircraft had to steer clear of lightning and thunderstorms. This was due to a restriction imposed after issues were identified with the Onboard Inert Gas Generation System, or OBIGS for short. The OBIGS is a crucial component of the F-35A, designed to protect the aircraft from the very real threat of lightning strikes. However, when it was discovered that the system wasn't up to par, a restriction was put in place for the safety of the pilots and integrity of the missions. This restriction was no small matter. Imagine the F-35A, a symbol of advanced technology and military might, grounded by a weather phenomenon as old as time itself. It's like a knight in shining armor unable to go into battle because of a faulty shield. But the story doesn't end there. The manufacturers, Lockheed Martin, along with the Air Force, went to work on fixing the problem. Their goal was to create a more robust design for the OBIGS hardware, one that could withstand the forces of nature and keep the F-35A in the air, regardless of the weather conditions. Alongside the hardware upgrades, software updates were also implemented to ensure the OBIGS could function optimally. These changes were thoroughly tested in both lab and flight settings, marking a significant step in getting the F-35A back into stormy skies. It's worth noting that the F-35B and F-35C models were never affected by this issue, a testament to the distinct features and functionalities of different models within the F-35 family. Now, after four long years, the F-35A is cleared to fly in lightning and thunderstorms again. It's a testament to the relentless pursuit of excellence in aviation technology, and a reminder that even the most advanced machines need consistent refinement and improvement. The fix involved a more robust design for the OBIGS hardware and software updates. Next, we look at the testing and implications of the fix on the F-35A Lightning. Following a four-year restriction, a robust design for the Onboard Inert Gas Generation System, or OBIGS, was developed. The modified hardware and software went through rigorous testing in both lab environments and real flight settings. This comprehensive testing ensured the fix was successful and that the F-35A could once again safely fly in thunderstorms and lightning. The implications of this fix are significant. No longer grounded by stormy weather, the F-35A's operational efficiency and strategic flexibility are greatly improved. This allows for increased deployment opportunities, enhancing the aircraft's role in global defense. Furthermore, the successful resolution of the OBIGS issue reaffirms the commitment to ongoing technological improvements in the defense sector. Lockheed Martin, the F-35 manufacturer, emphasized the aircraft's continued capability in global security. To wrap things up, let's consider the future of F-35A Lightning. Now that the F-35A has been cleared to fly in thunderstorms, it's like a falcon released from its chains, ready to soar higher. This development is a significant milestone, not just for the F-35A, but for the entire defense and security landscape. It's a testament to the resilience and adaptability of advanced military technology. Imagine a global security environment where the F-35A, free from previous restrictions, can perform optimally in diverse weather conditions. It's an image that brings a sense of awe and respect for the strides being made in military aviation. This isn't just about an aircraft, it's about the determination to overcome challenges and push the boundaries of what's possible. But let's not forget, the journey of the F-35A doesn't end here. With each passing day, the teams behind this marvel of technology are working tirelessly to enhance its capabilities, to ensure it remains a formidable asset in defense strategies worldwide. It's a new dawn for the F-35A Lightning, and we're eager to see how it shapes the future of global security. Operational details of the fix were not disclosed due to security concerns. Stay tuned for more updates. In other news, a new player has entered the global security arena. North Korea has recently unveiled its latest hypersonic missile system. The unveiling took place during a grand military parade, a spectacle often used by the North Korean regime to showcase its military prowess. This new missile system menacing in appearance has sent ripples through the international defense community. 
It's not just about the aesthetics though, the potential capabilities of this missile system are what truly make it a force to be reckoned with. Hypersonic technology allows missiles to travel at speeds exceeding Mach 5, significantly faster than traditional missile systems. This could potentially allow North Korea to bypass existing missile defense systems, raising the stakes in the global defense landscape. As the world adjusts to the newly unleashed prowess of the F-35A Lightning, this development out of North Korea serves as a stark reminder that the global security environment is ever-evolving, with new challenges emerging even as old ones are overcome. This new development has raised concerns among global defense experts, and rightly so. The implications of this missile system and its potential impact on global security will be closely watched in the days to come. Let's delve deeper into the specifics of this new missile system that North Korea has unveiled. The design itself is a testament to a significant leap in missile technology. With the potential to travel at speeds exceeding Mach 5, it's clear that this isn't just another missile in North Korea's arsenal. This is a game changer. The implications of North Korea possessing a hypersonic missile system are far-reaching. For one, the speed of these missiles could potentially allow North Korea to bypass existing missile defense systems, giving them a significant advantage. Not to mention, the precision these missiles are capable of could lead to devastating consequences if ever used. The global response to this new development has been a mix of concern and heightened alertness. Defense experts around the world are closely monitoring the situation, eager to understand more about the capabilities of this new missile system. The unveiling of this missile system has certainly shaken up the global defense landscape. As we move forward, it's clear that the world will need to adjust its defense strategies to account for this new threat. Finally, let's consider the future implications of North Korea's hypersonic missile system. This new technology doesn't just pose a potential threat to neighboring countries, it could significantly impact global security and defense strategies. With the ability to bypass existing missile defense systems, countries worldwide will be forced to rethink and redesign their countermeasures to address this new threat. The unveiling of this missile system has served as a wake-up call to the international community, emphasizing the urgent need for innovative defense solutions and strategies. It's a race against time, with nations scrambling to develop technologies capable of detecting and intercepting these high-speed projectiles. Additionally, this development underscores the importance of diplomatic efforts in maintaining peace and stability in the region. Tensions are high and the global community must work together to prevent escalation. As always, we'll keep you updated on any new developments. The world is changing rapidly, and it's crucial to stay informed about these shifts in the global defense landscape. In a recent development, the Danish frigate encountered several issues during its Red Sea operations. These problems were not minor glitches, but rather significant malfunctions that affected the ship's radar, combat system, and gun. It's a concerning situation, as these issues have the potential to severely impact the frigate's operational capabilities putting the crew and the mission at risk. The Danish Navy is currently investigating the cause of these problems. It's a complex task, requiring meticulous attention to detail and a deep understanding of the ship's intricate systems. At this point, it's too early to speculate about what might have caused these malfunctions. However, the Navy is committed to getting to the bottom of this issue as quickly as possible. The Danish Navy is working diligently to rectify these issues and restore the frigate's operational capabilities. It's a race against time, with the frigate's crew and the Navy's technical team working around the clock to get the ship back in working order. In the world of defense and security, every second count. We'll keep you updated on the progress of the Danish Navy's efforts to bring the frigate back to full operational status. Stay tuned for more updates on this and other critical defense news. Let's delve deeper into the implications of these issues on the Danish frigate. The malfunctions in the radar, combat system, and gun are not just technical hitches. They could potentially compromise the ship's defense capabilities, making it vulnerable in the face of potential threats. This situation underscores the importance of maintaining operational readiness, especially in a region like the Red Sea, known for its strategic importance and volatile nature. The Danish Navy's swift response to investigate and rectify the issues is commendable. It's a testament to their commitment to safeguarding their crew and upholding their mission. The Navy's technical team, along with the frigate's crew, are working tirelessly to get the ship back in working order. Their efforts are critical not just for this particular ship, but also serve as a reminder of the importance of readiness in the face of potential threats. These issues underscore the importance of regular maintenance and checks to ensure operational readiness. 
It's a stark reminder that in the world of defense and security, every minor glitch can have major implications. As we continue to monitor the situation, we hope for swift resolution of these issues and restoration of the frigate's full operational status. Stay tuned for more updates on this and other critical defense news. Finally, let's consider the future of the Danish frigate in light of these recent issues. The Danish Navy, known for its resilience and commitment, is leaving no stone unturned to restore the frigate's capabilities. The swift response and ongoing efforts to rectify the issues demonstrate their dedication to their mission and the safety of their crew. Moving forward, these issues could affect the frigate's future operations. It's a wake-up call that emphasizes the need for not just regular maintenance and checks, but also the need for contingency plans to address unexpected technical problems. This incident will undoubtedly shape the Danish Navy's approach to maintaining and managing their fleet in the future. However, it's essential to note that these challenges are not insurmountable. As the saying goes, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. The Danish Navy is likely to emerge stronger from this experience, with valuable lessons learned that can help prevent similar issues in the future. Despite these challenges, the Danish Navy remains committed to ensuring the operational readiness of its fleet. They continue to demonstrate their resilience and readiness to face and overcome any obstacle that comes their way. Stay tuned as we continue to follow this story and bring you updates on the Danish frigate's journey to full operational status. Move that could escalate tensions in the region, China is reportedly constructing naval bases in Bangladesh and Cambodia. These bases, once operational, pose a potential threat not only to the United States but also to India, both of whom have significant interests in the region. The locations of these bases are no coincidence. They are strategically positioned to monitor and control key maritime routes, potentially giving China an upper hand in any conflict that might arise. The base in Bangladesh, located at Cox's Bazar, would allow China to monitor the highly strategic Bay of Bengal and the Indian Ocean. On the other hand, the base in Cambodia, located at Reem, gives China a vantage point to observe and potentially control the South China Sea, a region already fraught with territorial disputes. This move is seen as part of China's broader strategy to assert its dominance in the region. Often referred to as the String of Pearls strategy, it involves establishing a network of military and commercial facilities along its sea lines of communication, extending from the Chinese mainland to Port Sudan. The strategy aims to secure China's lines of communication and strengthen its position in the Indian Ocean region. The implications of these developments are yet to be fully understood. However, it is clear that the geopolitical chessboard is changing rapidly and nations in the region must adapt to these changes or risk being left behind. As we have seen with Japan's move to bolster its defense capabilities, these developments carry the potential to trigger a new arms race in the region. The stakes are high and the world watches on with bated breath. As we delve deeper into the geopolitical implications of these developments, it's clear that the construction of these bases could have significant implications for both the U.S. and India. The U.S., with its strong naval presence in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, could find its operations disrupted by these new strategic outposts. China's presence in Bangladesh and Cambodia could provide it with an enhanced ability to monitor and potentially interfere with U.S. naval activities, a prospect that is likely to be of significant concern to Washington. For India, this move could challenge its influence in the Indian Ocean, a re strategies that the U.S. and India could adopt in response to these developments. Following the significant developments we've been discussing, it's now time to consider the potential strategies that the U.S. and India could consider to navigate these shifting tides. Let's start with the United States. With its strong naval presence potentially disrupted, the U.S. may need to consider enhancing its alliances and partnerships in the region. This could involve deepening its military cooperation with allies such as Japan, Australia, and South Korea, and potentially seeking new partnerships with nations wary of China's growing influence. India, on the other hand, might need to invest more heavily in its naval capabilities to counter the perceived threat from China. This could involve the acquisition of new submarines and surface warships, as well as the development of new naval bases and facilities. Additionally, India could also seek to strengthen its strategic partnerships with countries like the US, Australia, and Japan, forming a counterweight to China's increasing naval power. Lastly, both the US and India could explore diplomatic avenues to mitigate the potential disruptions caused by China's new naval bases. 
This could involve negotiations and dialogue with China, aiming to establish agreements that respect the interests of all parties involved. As we move forward, the stakes are high and the world is watching. The geopolitical chessboard is transforming, and the next moves by the US and India will be critical in shaping the future of this region. Stay tuned as we continue to delve deeper into this evolving situation in our next segment. In a significant show of military might and strategic cooperation, the US CH-53E Super Stallion, one of the largest and most powerful helicopters in the American arsenal, has made its debut landing in India. This heavy-lift cargo helicopter, capable of transporting troops, equipment and supplies, is a force to be reckoned with. The CH-53E Super Stallion's arrival in India is a clear message, a statement of intent amidst the ongoing geopolitical tensions in the region. Its capabilities including an impressive payload capacity, extended range and advanced navigation systems, make it a strategic asset for any military operation. This debut landing is not just a demonstration of US-India military cooperation, but also a strategic move in the geopolitical chessboard. It echoes the potential strategies we discussed earlier, reinforcing the idea of enhanced partnerships and military cooperation between the US and India. The reactions to this development have been varied. While it has been welcomed by many as a sign of strengthening US-India relations, it has also raised eyebrows in certain quarters, particularly in China. As the geopolitical landscape continues to shift, the world watches closely, waiting to see the next move in this high-stakes game. This event marks a significant milestone in the US-India military cooperation, adding a new dimension to their strategic partnership. As we delve deeper into these evolving geopolitical dynamics, stay tuned for more updates on the situation. In yet another display of military cooperation, the skies over the Bay of Bengal reverberated with the thunderous roars of the US B-52 Stratofortress, the C-130J Super Hercules, and India's Hawks. The B-52, a long-range heavy bomber that can perform a variety of missions, and the C-130J, a versatile aircraft capable of performing airlift search and rescue and tactical missions together with the Hawks, represent a formidable aerial force. The strategic significance of these aircraft, capable of carrying out precision strikes and delivering critical supplies, cannot be overstated. Their joint flight exercise over the Bay of Bengal sends a clear signal of the escalating military cooperation between the US and India. This event, following closely on the heels of the CH-53E Super Stallion's debut landing in India, underlines the growing strategic partnership between the two nations. The reactions to this display of cooperative military prowess have been diverse. While it has been hailed as a positive step towards a tighter US-India alliance, it has also raised concerns in other countries, particularly China, which has been watching these developments with a keen eye. These events underscore the strengthening military ties between the US and India, and their willingness to show a united front in the face of geopolitical tensions. As the dynamics continue to evolve, we will keep you updated on the latest developments in this high-stakes geopolitical chess game. In a strategic move that further underlines the strengthening of US-India ties, India is now set to become a key maritime maintenance center for US and UK warships. This development is significant, given India's strategic location in the Indian Ocean region, which allows for faster repairs and maintenance of warships, ensuring they can return to duty more quickly. This move serves not only a logistical purpose, but also carries substantial geopolitical implications. It solidifies the trilateral cooperation between the US, UK and India, effectively countering China's growing naval presence in the region. This development has been met with mixed reactions globally. While the US and UK hail it as a significant step forward in their strategic partnerships with India, China and other countries in the region have viewed this move with concern, seeing it as a further escalation in the ongoing geopolitical chess game. As India continues to rise as a key player in this high-stakes game, its moves are being closely watched by allies and adversaries alike. This move to make India a maritime maintenance center is yet another testament to the strengthening of the US-India military alliance, following the recent debut landing of the US CH-53E Super Stallion in India and the joint flight exercise of the B-52 and C-130J aircraft with India's Hawks over the Bay of Bengal. As the geopolitical landscape continues to evolve, we will keep you updated on the latest developments. Stay tuned for more updates on this high-stakes geopolitical chess game. 
In a significant development, U.S. and U.K. warships have docked in Chennai for faster repairs, further cementing India's role as a maritime maintenance center. This is a direct result of the strategic alliance between India, the U.S. and the U.K., which has been steadily growing in strength and depth. The choice of Chennai, a port city on the Bay of Bengal, is not accidental, but rather a strategic move that enhances the Allies' presence in a key maritime region. China, along with other countries in the region, has reacted with concern to this development. The docking of these warships in Chennai is seen as a clear message to China, underscoring the growing strength of the US-India-UK alliance. This move is seen as another piece on the geopolitical chessboard, further escalating tensions in the region. The implications of this development extend beyond immediate military cooperation. It represents a potential shift in the balance of power in the region. With India's role as a maritime maintenance center now firmly established, the US and UK's ability to maintain a strong naval presence in the region is significantly enhanced. This could potentially alter the dynamics of power in the Indian Ocean region, a critical waterway for global trade and a hotbed of geopolitical activity. As the situation continues to evolve, we will keep you updated on the latest developments. Stay tuned for more updates on this evolving situation. With India becoming a key maritime maintenance center for US and UK warships, let's delve deeper into the implications of this development. First off, this move significantly bolsters India's geopolitical standing. As the host of two of the world's major naval powers, India is transforming into a prominent player in the maritime domain. This in turn, could potentially impact the dynamics of power in the Indian Ocean region, and even beyond. However, this new role also presents challenges for India, balancing its relationships with other countries in the region, particularly China, will require nuanced diplomacy. On one hand, India needs to maintain its newfound strategic alliances with the US and the UK. On the other, it needs to manage its complex relationship with China, which views this development with concern. The opportunities for India are also significant. As a maritime maintenance center, India can leverage this position to develop its own naval capabilities and infrastructure. This could lead to advancements in technology, increased job opportunities and economic growth. The reactions from other countries, particularly China, will be crucial to watch. China, which has been expanding its own naval bases in the region, might see this as a direct challenge. This could potentially escalate tensions but could also lead to dialogue and negotiation. As the geopolitical landscape continues to evolve, we will keep you updated on the latest developments. Stay tuned as we continue to provide in-depth analyses of these high-stakes geopolitical developments. In light of the recent developments, let's delve into the current state of US-India military cooperation. Key events marking the strengthening of this alliance include the inaugural landing of the US CH-53E Super Stallion in India. There's also the joint flight exercise of the B-52 and C-130J aircraft with India's Hawks over the Bay of Bengal, a significant testament to this bonding. But it's not just about aircraft. India is evolving into a pivotal maritime maintenance center for warships from the US and the UK. Chennai has been selected for notable warships to dock, facilitating faster repairs and maintenance. These evolutions underscore a flourishing strategic partnership between the two nations. Together, they are showing a determination to present a united front amidst the escalating geopolitical tensions. These developments don't just revolve around immediate military collaboration, they reflect a shift in the geopolitical landscape. The strengthening of this US-India alliance has elicited a variety of global reactions, with China showing particular interest and concern. As we look ahead, we can expect more joint ventures, shared military intelligence and technology sharing. The world is keeping a close eye on how the US and India are bolstering their military ties amidst the evolving geopolitical landscape. Stay tuned as we continue to bring you the latest updates on this intricate geopolitical chess game.